Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel Achievers Data Engineering. My name is Gyanendra and this is part 12 of Azure Data Factory tutorial series. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to parameterize the data sets within Azure Data Factory. All right, so let's get started. All right. So in our previous video, we created a linked service and we parameterized uh, that particular linked service by passing and creating these kind of these many parameters over there. Now let's talk about how can we parameterize the data sets and why do we need it? So let's example uh, in this particular data set. So if I, if I go ahead and go on this particular copy activity and if I select the source, now in this particular source, we are passing a data set. If I open it again, which is already open, you would notice we created this particular data set to pointing out a particular table, a dim customer. And the purpose of having this particular table name is we wanted to fetch data from this table and then we want to do the further processing and load it into a different table into the sync as per the sync details that we have created. Now let's assume we don't want to hard code the table name here rather we want to pass the table name on the run so that we can utilize the same copy activity and pass multiple values for the same parameter so that every time it will execute, it will fetch for a new table or a different table as per our requirement. So what we can do is we can go into that, we can select or open that particular data set, click on this parameter option and hit new. Now here we can create a parameter name. So for now, let's say table name. We can keep the data type as a string. However, depending upon the type of parameter we're creating, we can pass a different data type. But for now, I'll continue with the string. And again, I'm going to leave the default value. If you are going to specify any value as a default, then in that scenario, where, wherever it is supposed to ask a value and we are not passing it, then it will by default take that value. Now, for now, we don't want that. I'll just keep it blank and go back to the connections tab. Now the moment will come back here. Now what I can do instead of having this dim customer name specified here, I'll just select on this add dynamic content. And here you will be able to see that particular parameter which we just created. So I'll select that. Now in this scenario, it, it is saying add the rate data set dot table name. However, the earlier parameters which we created and we selected, it was saying add the rate linked service and then the parameter name. So it defines the scope of this particular parameter that we have created. So I'll just hit OK. And uh, I can just go ahead and go back on this particular activity here again. Now, once we are back onto the main page of the source, you would notice it is asking for a value of that particular parameter that we created. So let me repeat if you are getting confused here. If we are opening the data set inside that data set, whatever value it is asking it is for the linked service because we are on that particular page wherever if we are on this main page where we are selecting that data set on this particular window it will ask for the values of database or sorry data set parameters so for now we can definitely pass this particular table name here however as i mentioned there are so many other ways through which we can pass this parameter value using pipeline parameters or even we can create a table in the SQL and then we can pass those values from that table on the run into the pipeline. So we will discuss about how to do that in our upcoming videos. For now we can do this here and pass a table name. We can similarly follow the same thing. We can, for example, if we select this copy activity, go into the sync and select this particular data set and hit open. Now under this, we can again create a uh, you know parameter and say table name. For here, I can maybe say destination table name. And we can keep the same string and leave it default. Go into the connection. And uh, under that, what I can do here, instead of having the same table name, I can just click on add dynamic content and select this particular parameter and hit OK. Now, once you will go back on that window of this particular copy activity and, and under the sync, it will ask to provide a value for that destination table. And then we can pass a value for now. All right. Now, once we will run this particular copy or when this, once we will run this particular pipeline, it will, you know, get this value as a parameter value on the run 
and it will pass it and then accordingly it will execute the pipeline and perform the data movement. I hope it was very helpful to understand how we can parameterize a data set within Azure Data Factory. If you like the content, please go ahead and hit the like button and do subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date on any latest video that I upload. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Have a great day.